Next stop on our discussion on temperature and heat, we have thermal expansion. For most materials, it has been observed that expansion occurs when the temperature increases and contraction occurs when the temperature decreases. This phenomenon is known as thermal expansion. And again, for most materials, this is followed. Temperature increase, expansion. Temperature decrease, contraction. Depending on how you measure the expansion or contraction, there are three types of thermal expansion analysis. You have linear expansion, area expansion, and volume expansion. It must be noted that these are just three ways of analyzing the expansion, again, depending on how the expansion was measured. As such, these three types of expansion analysis happen at the same time as there is only one object undergoing thermal expansion. We are simply measuring the, ex the expansion in different ways. We can measure the expansion in terms of linear length or we can measure the expansion in terms of area, whether you have cross-section area or surface area, or we can measure the expansion in terms of volume. First, let's have linear expansion. When you look at how the length of an object changes with the temperature, you are doing linear expansion analysis. Say you have a cylinder at initial temperature T0, Initial length of the cylinder is L0, initial cross-section area is A0, and initial volume of the cylinder is V0. Say the object undergoes change in temperature, so there is delta T, the temperature changes from initial temperature T0 to final temperature T, and for the sake of our Example, for the sake of our discussion, say there is temperature decrease, that is to say T is less than T0. The object will contract, the object will become smaller. From initial length L0, the length of the object becomes L. The cross-section area becomes A and the volume of the object becomes V. If we look at how the length changes with respect to time, we have delta L is equal to L0 alpha delta T, where delta L is the change in length, final length minus initial length, so L minus L0, for instance, you have delta T change in length. And L0, of course, is the initial length of the object. Alpha is the coefficient of linear expansion. Unit is per Celsius degree or per Kelvin. Coefficient of linear expansion is a property of the material that comprises the object. Each material has its own value of coefficient of linear expansion. And delta T is the change in temperature. Final temperature minus initial temperature. In this case, final temperature T minus initial temperature T0, you have delta T, change in temperature. So linear expansion Delta L is equal to L0 alpha delta T. And this applies to any length associated with the object. Not just length L, it's also applicable to the radius of the cross-section area, for instance. So radius R is length. So you can also have change in R is equal to R initial 
alpha delta t. You can also have the circumference of the circular cross-section area, for instance, and so on. When you look at how the cross-section area or surface area changes with respect to temperature, you are doing area expansion. So you either cross-section area or the total surface area of the object, you look at how it changes with respect to time, you are doing area expansion analysis. There are two ways of doing area expansion analysis. One way is by combining the linear expansion analysis equation with equations of area to do area expansion analysis. For instance, area, if say you have a cylinder, it has a circular cross section. So cross section area is pi r squared. So initial area A naught is pi r naught squared. When the temperature changes, the radius changes, as we have mentioned. From r naught, the radius becomes r. You have delta r is equal to r naught alpha delta t. Performing linear expansion analysis, you are able to determine, say, the final radius r. And then applying a is equal to pi r squared, you are able to calculate the final cross-section area. Knowing the initial cross-section area, a naught is equal to pi r naught squared. Knowing the final cross-section area, a is equal to pi r squared you are able to determine the change in cross-section area. Area expansion analysis. If you already know the area, however, for instance, say you know the cross-section area A naught of the object, you can use the area expansion equation. Delta A is equal to A naught sigma delta T. Delta A is the change in area. Initial area A naught. Final area A. Delta A is final area minus initial area. So A minus A naught. A naught is of course initial area. Sigma is the coefficient of area expansion. Unit is per Celsius degree or per Kelvin. Just like coefficient of linear expansion, coefficient of area expansion is property of the material making up the object. Each material has its own value of coefficient of area expansion. And lastly, we have volume expansion. When you look at how the volume changes with the temperature, you are doing volume expansion analysis. And just like with area expansion, there are two ways of going about doing volume expansion analysis. First, you can combine linear expansion analysis with volume equations to do volume expansion analysis. We know that based on the shape of the object, you'll be able to calculate the volume of the object using the dimensions of the object. For instance, for a cylinder, volume is cross-section area times length. Cross-section area is pi r squared. So volume depends on the radius of the cross-section area and the length of the object. So L naught, length of the object, will undergo linear expansion. So delta L is equal to L naught alpha delta T. The radius of the cylinder, the object for instance, will also undergo 
linear expansion. So, delta R is equal to R naught alpha delta T knowing the change in the radius, knowing the final radius, you'll be able to determine the change in cross-section area as we have mentioned. Knowing the change in length, you'll be able to determine the final length. Final cross-section area, final length, you'll be able to determine the final volume. So knowing the initial volume, knowing the final volume, you are able to determine the change in volume of the object you are doing volume expansion analysis. So again, by combining linear expansion analysis with volume equations, you are able to determine, you are able to do rather volume expansion analysis. But if you already know the volume of the object, say the initial volume, you can use the volume expansion equation. Delta V is equal to V naught beta delta T. Delta V is change in volume. Final volume minus initial volume. V minus V naught. You have delta V change in volume. And V naught, of course, is initial volume of the object. Beta is the coefficient of volume expansion. Unit is per Celsius degree or per Kelvin. And of course, delta T is change in temperature. Final temperature minus initial temperature. T minus T naught, you have delta T change in temperature. The coefficient of volume expansion is just like linear expansion coefficient and area expansion coefficient. Beta, the coefficient of volume expansion is property of the material. Each material has its own value of coefficient of volume expansion. As such, each material has three values of expansion coefficient. It has coefficient of linear expansion, coefficient of area expansion, and coefficient of volume expansion. And these three expansion coefficients are related to each other as follows. Sigma is just twice alpha, while beta is three times alpha. So, sigma is two alpha and beta is three alpha. So, if the problem, for instance, gives you alpha of the material but you need to do volume expansion analysis, you are given alpha. Just multiply it by 3, you have the coefficient of volume expansion of the material, and so on. And that's it for now. That's it for this video. That's it for our discussion on thermal expansion. We'll continue our discussion on temperature and heat in the next video wherein we look at a few examples covering what we have discussed so far. So once again, that's it for now. Thank you for watching.